sometimes things just don't work out as planned. This old shed here that I uh, made the door for, uh, it just didn't work out. In fact, uh, when I went to try to fix it, it almost fell over. So, we're building a new shed and we're going to show you how I do it. It's a little bit windy out here, but uh, hopefully you won't get too much wind noise. But this is a situation where things don't always go as planned. Of course, here's the, the shed that I was going to uh, put that door on. And it needed some work in the front, so I did a little digging down and started digging and got down to the bottom of it. And went and put a jack underneath it to raise it up to try to level it. And the problem is this whole thing started leaning to the east. And I thought the whole thing was going to go over, so set it back down, got it kind of braced, so the plan now is to just build a new shed. Okay, so out here what I like to call the back 40, um, all the way back to the corner of our property, this is where I have the beehives. And of course I have a big barrier up here so it doesn't disturb the neighbors when the bees take off. It's about uh, 7 feet high. And then there's a tree line all the way along there, and I have this big area right here. This is where I'm going to build the new shed, and it's going to be 8 foot by 8 foot outside dimensions. And basically just like the other one, but uh, new. And I'll be building it on uh, with treated wood on the bottom, as the uh, other one was, as a, being a brass shack, was not treated. So, a little trip to the lumber yard yesterday. Of course, going right into the sun here. But I got a whole truckload of stuff here now. And my other problem is, since I'm back here so far, the nearest power is over a hundred feet, and that's to the nearest greenhouse I can get to. So the air compressor is going to have to sit over there because I don't have enough uh, heavy-duty cord to go 130, 140 feet. Uh, the cord I do have will probably be okay for running uh, circuiter saws and such, and if that doesn't work, I'll have to either go get my cordless saw or bring the generator out here, but I don't want to listen to that either if I don't have to. So I'll get some things unloaded here and uh, try to get this laid out. Okay, what I've done here is I've laid out the, the basic size of it just roughly. Nothing's leveled. It's uh, just approximate so I can kind of get an idea of what I need to uh, raise and lower. Uh, this corner up here is the high point. That back there is a the low point, so I'll level everything off of that low point so some of these here are going to have to be dug down. I'm also going to be cutting all my uh, frame members to length. The, the shed is going to be 8 feet wide and the finished outside dimension on the length is also going to be 8 feet but I need to make the deck two and a half inches smaller to allow for the half inch of sheeting on both ends plus the three quarter inch rake board on both ends that way when I put the roof sheeting on, it comes out even at 8 feet and I don't have to try to add a little piece in or anything like that. Uh, if There's no plans for this, I just build this stuff. Uh, there are plans for building 8x8 eight eight sheds, they're very common. I think you could probably download some of them free off the internet. And a lot of the home stores, you know, the Homely Depot and Lowe's and Nards, all these places, they have plans you can buy and if you uh, buy their whole kit, you generally get the plans with it. But the next thing I need to do here now is get my boards cut to length and get those roughly assembled so I can get this leveled and get my piers dug down. I don't think you need to watch me dig holes. Anybody can do that. Okay, got the basic frame in place and this is probably one of the most time consuming things because you absolutely want it to be square and you want it to be level all the way around. And yes, these are uh, 2x4s rated for ground contact. They're the extreme duty pressure treated. And this thing you see in the corner here, this little brace, that's to keep it square. I uh, use the 3-4-5 method, and if you've never heard of that, you uh, measure 3 foot down one side, 4 foot down the other side, and the diagonal between should be exactly 5 foot. And it is on all four corners. And as you can see here, we are level. So now the next step will be to put in some floor joists. And I'll have to do a little bit of digging up here in the front, but I've already done a lot of it, so a little more ain't going to hurt. 
Okay, so there we have the floor joists all in. 16 inches on center, those are 2 by 4s and they're not all the same age class as you can see. We've got a few different colors and a couple of them I used to, uh, as a prop when I was uh, doing some painting. Okay, so my next step here will be to put the plywood on. I'll be using half inch treated plywood and the problem is it's in the truck and everything else is on top of it so I'm going to have to unload that first. Okay, I'm using inch in, or two and a half inch galvanized nails in the nail gun and I've got uh, chalk line snapped where all the uh, joists are. I just go down and nail everything in. Now what I did be, when I first laid the plywood down, nailed each one in all four corners and then one in the center to, on the 48 inch mark. And from there I just went back and uh, snapped some lines. I'd snap the line across the back where I needed to uh, cut that two and a half inch strip off. And that's done. So just need to nail this. And just like that we got a floor nailed down. So you're thinking now it's time for the walls. No, it isn't. I start with the roof. To be more precise, I build the roof trusses. I'm not going to just stick them. I'm going to actually make little trusses for this. And I make those before I build the walls because I can use this platform to build the trusses on. Since I'm so far back in the, in the back 40 as I call it, I don't have any solid level surface really to uh, build these on. So the best place to do it would be right on the deck. I'll get some stuff laid out and we'll get to building some trusses. Okay, using a speed square, I marked the 412 pitch at the one end of this 2x4 and cut it. It's roughly 17 and a half degrees if you're looking at it that way. And I made a mark on my floor exactly four foot in so that's the center of the shed. Now here at the other end I want to have a three and a half inch overhang. So what I've done is measured three and a half inches out from the edge and then set my speed square for 412 pitch struck a line here that'll be the tail cut. Okay, the next step here would be to cut the bird's mouth. Up here, this is, as you did with down here, you may get her three and a half inches back. Not this dimension, but the horizontal dimension. Start your cut, that's your cut for your first cut for your bird's mouth. Then for the second cut, which is this one here, I use a framing square. So on the inside of the tongue, you have 12 inches there and four inches there. That's your 412 pitch, and that'll be the designation for your bird's mouth cutout. And some people cut these out with a circular saw and just overcut on both sides. I don't like to do that. I actually use a jig saw, so I have nice square cuts and I don't end up with any overcut. Okay, once you've got one of these all cut to fit and everything, um, I'm going to be putting these trusses two foot on center. That means I need uh, five trusses, so I'll need ten of these pieces. Always use the same one for the pattern. Put a P on it, that way you won't get them mixed up. And if you start uh, adding on, pretty soon your marks get farther and farther away and then you're going to end up off. So it's just a matter of uh, cutting nine more of these.
And when you get done, you'll have a whole bunch of door stops. So this is how it lays out. Um, it's laid back down on the deck, and if you would you picture them little blocks of wood on the edge out here, on the two edges, as your wall plate, that is how the truss will sit on top of the wall plate. Next, we need to make the gussets for the top. Okay, you'll see I've got some uh, blocks screwed down to the deck there to make a jig. And the uh, purpose of that is to be able to put these gussets on. Uh, what this is is a piece of 716 OSB, that's oriented strand board. You can also use half inch plywood or half inch OSB, or whatever you got laying around. These are 12 inches this way and 8 inches this way with a 20 degree angle cut both ways. This will set up in the peak and we'll need to put this just on one side for the end trusses on each end and the three in the center will get one of these on each side of the truss. This prevents the truss from opening up from a load um, doing this in lieu of uh, having ceiling joists. I mean, it's a small area. Uh, I'm not worried about it sagging or anything. I mean, the other one I had there didn't even have these, and it's been up there for almost 30 years. Uh, it's the floor and the walls that were the problem there. But I'm going to put these on with, uh, those happen to be inch and seven eighths nails. If you use two inch nails, they're liable to come through the other side. And then if you're doing one for you know, one of the center ones, you want to put a gusset on the other side as well. There we have it, one truss. You can sit like this, but much taller later. And that's just a matter of taking your next pieces, putting them back in your jig. Gnarly looking 2 by 4 there, but it'll work. Then just continue right down the line to get them all put together. Okay, we got the floor built. Sitting on it here. Got the trusses made for the roof. Next thing will be the walls, but before I start on the walls, there is something I want to do. On the uh, old shed, there's a couple windows on the sides. I'm going to see if they are worth saving, and if they are, I'm going to take them off and measure them so I can frame in some rough openings when I do these two sidewalls. So I'll go uh, maybe have an adult beverage first because uh, I think I've earned it. I've got uh, eight hours into this so far from the time I got back here and started laying this out. So not bad I suppose. But need a little bit of liquid refreshment and then take those windows off and uh, see if they're worth saving and if they're not maybe I just won't put any windows in here. We'll see. And yeah, this old rocking chair has been laying around out here for years. It's what they call a Carolina porch rocker. And it needs restoring, but uh, it works for sitting in every once in a while. Okay, I've got the first wall framed up. Um, this is not the way you frame a window if you're building like a garage or a house or something. You would actually have a header in there and you would have cripples on each side of the window. But uh, since I'm going 16 inches on center here, uh, on this wall, which isn't necessary. You could easily do 24 inches on center. Uh, it's, it's just a shed. Uh, I framed out the window that way. The window I took off the old shed uh, will certainly work. I don't know whose idea it was to put it on with a nail gun because I had a hell of a time getting the nails out of it, but uh, it's fully functional. It just needs a little cleaning up and it'll work fine for this. What it is is a storm window 
And what they had done when that was a brass shack was they had turned it sideways. So the drain holes were actually on the side instead of on the bottom. So it accumulated a lot of junk in it. So I got to clean them up. But they do work and they do function. So uh, next I'll be uh, standing this up. And maybe you're wondering why I don't sheet it first. Uh, if I had help, I would. But since I'm by myself, I'll be uh, standing this up and nailing it down and putting the sheeting on afterwards. And with the sheeting on it and the wall, that's a little bit much for me to try to uh, mess with by myself. So I'll try to get this wall stood up. That ought to hold it. A couple braces on there. Now it's just a matter of uh, repeating the same thing for the other side. about it for one day. Oh, it's five o'clock. I started on this at uh, 7 30 this morning so by the time I get everything put away I'll have 10 hours in this just today. But it's coming along. Okay here we go day number two a little bit breezy and quite cool 53 degrees here this morning which is kind of refreshing after working out here in the mid to upper 80s yesterday and uh, sweating a pretty good amount. As you can see, I got the end wall built down here now and stood up. All I need to do is uh, get it plumbed up and nailed up to the sides. Can't get much better than that. final squaring done up when I go to put the sheeting on the sides. Uh, this was just kind of a, a rough set. Now I need to uh, work on my front frame. You may have also noticed that I use full-size corner posts. Uh, you don't have to do that when you're building a shed. You could just do the basic L. I did that in case I decide to uh, maybe 
put something on the inside, maybe OSB or something, or pegboard, and then I'll have actually something to nail to. It also makes a quite a bit stronger structure. Uh, there again, for a shed, it isn't necessary, but I decided to go that little bit extra. Something else I was thinking about last night, I wasn't going to put uh, ceiling joists in, because uh, they're not necessary with the gussets on the truss. But uh, in looking at it and thinking about it, it's a good place to uh, store a little bit of stuff up high since I did go with full 8 foot walls. The, uh, the old shed only had uh, roughly 6 foot outer walls. I went with the full 8 foot so I'll have that vertical space. Especially with uh, all these honey supers and uh, brood boxes, I can just stack them up as high as I want and I won't be limited by ceiling height quite so much. But there, again, with the uh, adding some ceiling joists in there, and I'm going to have to go get a few more boards for, or 2x4s for that, it'll give me a, uh, a flat surface to put stuff on. And if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that if there's a flat surface, by golly, I'll put something on it. So now I'll get out to laying out this front wall. Now well, I got the front wall all framed up and uh, it warmed up down to a t-shirt now. And yes, I'm a Bears fan, in spite of how they're doing many years. Uh, gonna get this stood up and uh, move it on. Okay, so here we have the front wall and you're thinking, well that door is kind of low. Well that's because I've got an uh, idea on something I want to put above it on the inside. Uh, this is uh, made to fit that door that I built for the other shed. I hate to have it just kind of go to waste. And I don't really need a, uh, a big door here because most of the time I'm half bent over anyway. So, now my next problem is I didn't quite count right when I was calculating 2x4s and I'm short some, so I'm going to have to run to the lumber yard and get some more 2x4s. That, and because I'm adding uh, ceiling joists in, I'm going to need five more for that. Okay, well as you can see, got some sheeting going on. I uh, got two of the sides done and uh, fixing to do the west side here. wondering what these screws are I'm putting on at the bottom when you're working by yourself you have to have some way to hold that uh, piece of sheeting up till you get the nail started by uh, driving these screws in down through the base that holds the sheet up and allows me to be able to position it where I need it without having to actually try to hold it up
It's extremely important to have that square too on that first one, otherwise your sheets will be all wonky as you go down the line. And another thing that's important, before you start a sheet, make sure your nail gun's full. Okay, got more ammo. Being tall is a plus. Sometimes. And then for the window opening here, I just go inside with a sawzall and cut that out. Who goes there? Now it's just a matter of uh, doing the same thing again, getting this last sheet up on here, and then I'll uh, tackle the front, which will be pieced in. Okay, sheeting's all on, all the way around, and now I've got one of the trusses. This is just setting up here, and you'll see in the middle, on the end truss here, you're going to need a little something to nail the sheeting to. Uh, this is just a scrap of 2x4, and find the center of it, and cut a 20 degree angle both ways from the center and that'll fit perfect in the peak then just measure your length and cut that to fit. Um, I'll tack that on with that OSB on the back side and then the, it'll actually be sandwiched when I cut the piece of sheeting for this side. You'll also notice there's a, uh, the sheeting on the front and the back is an inch and a half lower than on the sides. I did that on purpose and the reason is when I cut the sheeting for this piece on the truss it gives me a little something extra to nail to and adds a little bit of extra strength to it. Uh, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is I've seen they'll put uh, a sleeper up here and they'll nail into that. But this is the way I've always done it, so it works. So now I just need to uh, lay out a piece of sheeting and get this covered. There's the first truss. A little bit of massaging I had to do there. Okay, so it looks something like this when you get the first truss on. Of course, I still need to fasten the 2x4s to the top plate. And I'll do that from the inside as I lay out the next trusses and put in my ceiling joists that I've decided to uh, use anyway. So that'll be my next step. And i got about another hour yet to mess with this. So see what I can get done. Okay, the inside trusses are held on with, uh, I call these hurricane ties. Uh, some people call them truss hangers, there's truss mounting clips, there's lots of names for them. They're only about a dollar a piece and it's much better than toenailing because you could very easily split the end of that rafter. And uh, it's series of screws in the bottom and then uh, a couple on each side. And I guarantee you that uh, if your roof blows off, it'll take the building with it because these aren't just going to come off of there. Um, I've used that when we built our uh, 
house. I've used them when I build other sheds. And they're extremely strong. Okay, this here is what they are. You can kind of see that there. And, uh, granted, they're just uh, a heavy sheet metal, but they, they also make mounting these a whole lot easier than rather than trying to toenail and then you split something and then you end up with a mess. But these are, it's an ideal thing and uh, it's a good investment when you're building a building. Okay, you got the floor built, got the walls built, got the trusses made, got the walls up, got the sheeting on it, got the trusses up. This is going to be the end of part one and coming up in part two we'll be doing the fascia and the soffit and the roof and we'll get on with the siding. Might even hang the door. Okay, of course, uh, as with all the videos, if you like this, we always appreciate getting that thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And of course, we're always looking for subscribers, and next to that subscribe button is a little bell. You click that bell, you'll be notified when we post the next video. Otherwise, I'm Roger, not in the shop, out in the back 40, building a bee shed. See you in the next video.